in the old days, the barrel was just a really convenient way of storing something. The, the, the flavor aspect was sort of secondary. Barrel aging beers and doing what we do is sort of, it's, it's a nice, it's a nice connection to the past, you know, it's our own twist on, you know, something that's already pretty rad. So we're kind of bringing back that traditional brewing sense to, uh, to the craft industry. The creative process is, is the most critical part of, of being a great brewer. I read a book, I think when I was 14, uh, that described all the flavors you'd get from barrel aging. That night I kind of snuck uh, some scotch whiskey out of my godfather's cabinet. So I, I wanted to taste all those flavors. I found it totally unpalatable and had to spit it out. Um, now I love scotch. The world of oak and what it contributes in flavor is just as complex as the world of hops, in my opinion. And that's a bold statement, I know, but it's true. I try to approach it as an art project and try to do the most creative thing I can with, with the beer, which represents craft to me. Something that's made with a lot of TLC, relatively small scale. I think that's why craft beer is a lot different from the rest of the beer we make in America. It's, uh, there's a lot more time and effort and thought put into it. Stone's all craft. Everything we make is craft. We move a little bit more nimbly. We, we, we make things that no one's ever seen before more frequently. That's kind of what we do. The small batch team was Laura. Laura was the small batch brewer. I'm the queen bee, yo. No. <laughs> I'm the first female brewer for Stone, which I think is pretty cool. <laughs> We've been barrel aging for several years, at least since we moved into the new building. So my focus is barrels because that's where I want to be. I want to be with these things. They don't talk back. They're very quiet. I like the beer that's in the barrels, and I like the different flavors that we get, and I like the blending, and I find it very enjoyable. I'm actually like a mythical part like of things that you know people have no, sometimes they don't know who makes a beer, and they don't know that there's tanks, and it's, it's pretty cool that people actually get to see that, like break that myth of like, yeah, you know what, there are people out there, just, they're just me just making beer, you know? It's, I, I, I think it's a special thing sort of a blazing our own our own path, so to speak. We've already shown that we're, we're ready to do it, you know, it's just a matter of putting our own, our own twist on, you know, something that's already pretty rad. We know that um, malty beers, you know, lower hops, um, high ABV, those, those kinds of things age really well. I believe barley wines, you know, reds, um, stouts, porters, Imperial Russians, you know, things of that nature are, are more, in my opinion, better for a barrel. We're still young. Um, the reason why we got, you know, Steve Gonzalez, uh, he, he brings a lot of a lot of knowledge to the to the table when it when it has to do with uh, with barrel aging. I've been obsessed with uh, brewing since college, really, 1991. It was my first job out of college too, uh, first full-time professional job. But I think you can't be a great brewer without some intuition. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh man, that would be awesome. And I can actually taste that beer before I brew it. And I, it, it's just almost like a vision.